Hello, everyone. I am uh, Reena Rangdir. I'm the director of the STEM Starter Academy at STIC. Uh, so this academy is uh, funded by the Department of Higher Education. And the main goal of this academy is to create STEM awareness. So STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, so we create awareness. We try and recruit more students into the program, retain them, and help them graduate or transfer into a STEM field or jobs. Um, a whole college actually comes together. It's one of those programs where the administrators, the deans, the, all the professors, all the resources, uh, we all come together to nurture this cohort of students. And that's why we see more retention and uh, graduation rates in, through, uh, in our students who go through the academy. Uh, Pythagoras Day, you know, is coming up. It's so exciting. It's December 16th, 2020, 12, 16, 2020. So, so if you square 12, it's uh, 144. So squaring 16, that is 16 times 16 is 256. So if you add the squares of 16 and 12, it is equal to 400 which is the same as 20 square. So 20 is the last two digits of the year. So 20 times 20 is 400. So it's 144 plus 256, that's equal to 400 and that's amazing. Uh, it happens rarely. Uh, it's a joyous day for everybody in STEM. Uh, you don't have to buy anything, don't, no need to buy gifts. Uh, so the reason we celebrate uh, Pythagoras Day is because, see, one of the biggest contributions of this uh, philosopher, discoverer, uh, Pythagoras, uh, you know, who was born like 470 BC, uh, is because of his contribution to science. Uh, we all know, we've memorized this in high school, A square plus B square is C square. Uh, but now, you know, I'm like realizing the applications of Pythagoras is everywhere. So that's why Pythagorean theorem, A plus B square is equal to C square. Most of the activities that we have done with the students are rooted in the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, one of the biggest beliefs of Pythagorean, uh, Pythagoras was that uh, science, technology, uh, innovation, engineering, math, and all of life events and processes can be explained in math. So we've had several activities for our student. The main goal being to uh, present STEM in a very fun and engaging way, in a hands-on way. Uh, one of the biggest uh, activities that like everybody gets excited about and Professor Z Haddad uh, leads this activity is our bridge building activity. Uh, and I want one of our student mentors uh, to explain about it, Lucas Soros. Hi, uh, yeah. So the thing is about Pythagoras theorem and all of that in general is it comes up in every class that you ever go into when it comes into STEM. Um, every science class, every math class, you're going to end up using it. So it, it, in Z's class, we were, we were doing a math class at the same time that we were doing the STEM Star Academy. And in the math class, this is the first time a lot of students were seeing um, Pythagoras' theorem and actually beginning to learn it actually like see its application. So with the bridge, you get to see, because with a regular bridge, it has a truss system, which is just basically just a bunch of triangles that they use for support. And the way they get the measurements for those triangles and for, for the support system is they use Pythagorean's theorem to know what the me measurements are gonna be. So that way that when you actually buy the materials you go to cut the materials, get everything ready, that you already have all the measurements done because you did on paper and the math always checks out to the actual physical item that you're doing. Um, here we can see Professor Rama, which is one of the people that helped out with the bridge. You can see this is the, up, the upper part of the truss, and they're measuring out the, um, the bottom of the truss for the support. And you can see that they're just basically making sure the measurements match up. And the truth is it does end up matching up because we already, already did the calculation and the theorem holds true. So it's really fascinating to see that even in the real world, you know, anyone can do Pythagorean's theorem on paper. But then when you see it transition into the real world, it's just so fascinating to see it. So there we can see Professor Rama with a student and we're measuring out um, to make sure the truss is gonna fit or the, the, the cable anyway. And here we can see um, the support system that's built with the, with the rope and the different um, 
cable for the trusses below that are attached and all the measurements were done beforehand and all we had to do was just cut it and set it up because it holds true and the bridge held and you can see there's how many students let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen like 18 students all on the bridge at once <laughs> and it could hold which is something that, that i couldn't do if it didn't have that support system so that's all thanks to pythagorean's theorem the fact that we could use like triangles and math to be able to support extra force on the bridge um, but it goes so far beyond that because no matter what class you take, if you take throughout engineering or even science, math or anything, you're always going to be using it because triangles and that relationship comes up in everything, you know, force distributions, um, physics, physics, especially, um, and even, even for students that go into music, um, Pythagoras has stuff on music too. Um, and, and especially during the STEM star Academy on that same day, we were doing the bridge. We also had a drum circle. And the cool thing about Pythagoras is he, he was one of the first people to ever hypothesize that music is actually related by number ratios. So that the reason why one thing sounds good with something else and sounds good to a human is based on these number ratios and the frequency at which that instrument's operating. So for instance, um, one drum sounds better with another drum, and usually that actually wouldn't be the case if it wasn't for Pythagorean's theorem. And in that drum circle, you got to really see how all the drums play together and they all work together to sound really good. So you can see all the different kinds of drums. When you play them all together, they sound really harmonious because they all operate on a certain frequency and they all play well together. Because of what Pythagoras did and made that discovery about the way ratios play into music and the way we actually enjoy hearing music, um, a lot of modern music is still built off that to this day. So he had lasting implications that have just remained throughout our culture, especially with uh, regards to Western music. Um, for instance, like I have uh, a guitar right here. <laughs> Is he like a guitar? So um, because of the ratios that he came up with, uh, you can now play different chords that sound good. And you can know the progression. So that's why musicians well, that can hear music and be like, oh, this is what's going in this order because they're so used to hearing what goes good together. For example, like if I play just a random chord progression or on a guitar, it's not gonna sound right unless you have the right frequency. So for instance, like a couple of chords that go good together, if you can kind of see here is, um, you work good, you do a G, sounds good with a C, which sounds good with a D. So those three chords can all sound good together. And that's all based on number ratios that was first hypothesized by Pythagoras. So lasting implications that have just stemmed into our culture, um, pun intended. <laughs> um, the last thing that we'd have, my last demonstration, I have a um, pendulum. And this is something, a uh, physics problem with really intense math if you actually get into it, especially for students that go into physics. Let me kind of pan over to it. <laughs> you can kind of see the, the pendulum. I'm gonna pan the camera down a little bit. Um, let me put this down. Okay, so you can see that it's basically just a bunch of hanging washers. And when it goes like this, right, you can see it easily makes a triangle. <laughs> so you can calculate the angle and the way it swings. But another thing that that's really th uh, thankful for Pythagoras is like, when you actually start this, you'll begin to see that when they swing back and forth, they actually form wave motion and they form patterns. So if we actually do that demonstration, we let them go. First, they start by swinging together. And the longer time goes, they start to fall out of sync, but only for a minute, because then they begin to form a pattern. And that pattern actually looks like a wave, which I'm not going to get too deep into the math, but it has a lot of implications into Pythagoras and triangles and the graphs of trig functions. Um, so let me see. You can begin to see it now. It's starting to do the wave. Um, it'll, it'll basically look like this, you know, like a sine wave. And if I were to let this go, this would probably go for another 10 minutes and it would even just start even looking more and more like it until it literally just looked perfect like that. We're going to introduce Emerson. She's going to talk about... Um, Pythagoras and the sports and how we use that when um, in the STEM Star Academy without even knowing. Hey, thank you, Lucas. That was great. Um, I ended up doing a PowerPoint presentation, so I will share my screen. So we have the Pythagorean theorem and sports. That's sick. We have played football. Uh, during the STEM Starter Academy, like after lunch, and it's been really fun. And in football, if you know the distance like A squared and B squared, then you can find the distance C squared 
that you need for the defender to run at a right angle and catch up with another player to make a tackle. And for our paper airplanes, you can find the velocity a paper airplane is flying at using the Pythagorean theorem. And as you can see here, we all made paper airplanes during the STEM Starter Academy, and we threw them to find out whose design could go the furthest. And in soccer, a sport I played at stick, you can use the theorem when you're throwing in a ball, as seen here, or when you're kicking a ball. Um, and you can also use it, like the goalie can use it to figure out how much time to stop the ball. They have to stop the ball going in for a penalty kick, even though it's, you won't like really use it in my game, but it's something that you could do if you wanted to. So why is, um, you know, math and science and technology, all those hard, hard, challenging classes, why is it so important? Why should we uh, encourage our students to study it? Um, see, just like how alphabets are important for communication, for the written word, that's how STEM, the foundation of science, technology, engineering, and math, the basic principles, that's very important for any kind of STEM innovation in the future. It is important for us to know STEM, only then we'll be able to understand the principles of life. And more importantly, this is what will push humanity into the future. Most of the jobs that's coming up in the next few years, it's all STEM jobs. So, you know, these are hard subjects. So like we would always ask, why should I pursue a hard subject? You know, it, it, studying STEM is not compulsory, but it should be a choice for our students. So it should be offered to the students in a very fun and engaging way. And that's what we aim to do here at STIC. We have so many STEM majors. And then we all come together to host a lot of STEM speakers, STEM symposium. We have a huge event called Create Event, where students, uh, we teach them all the basic STEM uh, uh, principles through workshops like coding or uh, gaming, internet, and, and so forth. And then we uh, encourage the students to innovate. So we have a series of events all through the year, you know, robotics event, and we have STEM expos, we have guest speakers, we have an excellent summer bridge program. So here our focus is incoming STEM majors, and then we take a cohort of like 50 to 75 students. They are all high school uh, uh, students who are coming into stick in a STEM major or thinking about STEM. And then we uh, uh, build them up with a, like a math boot camp and we prepare them for success. So when fall comes, they, they are ready for fall classes because we have connected them to all the campus resources they know their deans, they know they, they, the faculty and staff, they would have made friends. And the whole college experience is uh, joyful for them. So one of the main findings is uh, our retention rates are good, our graduation rates are good. It's because of the collaboration of the whole campus and it's because of this relationship that we have with our students. So that is the prime goal of the STEM Starter Academy, to support the student, to engage them in STEM activities so that it's not compulsory, but it's a choice for them. Thank you.